Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the February 27th edition of the Board of Selectmen meeting. As um, per tradition, let's start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you, everyone. It's always great to hear you listen. <coughs> okay, also per tradition, we um, have a public forum. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anybody in our studio audience that would uh, like to come up? So and this, this also goes out to the entire town. Thank you for your time today. 1020. Uh, like right, um, uh, Selectman Hur is uh, joining us remotely. You may hear a voice come in. Uh, <laughs> that is that is him, and it is not you, uh, nice anybody else. Pardon me? Brian, can you hear us? Brian. It, it is not him, it is her. Okay. Uh, oh, my goodness. All right, funny, funny. All right. You're he's, unwitting from a thousand miles that's away, That's great. Too. That's great. He's in a good mood, so this will be a nice meeting. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks for coming. Well, thank you for your little uh, time here this evening. Ted 20, uh, Hopkinton, Lake Point Way. Uh, here representing the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce and uh, a subcommittee of our, our association. We're here to talk to you about an idea that uh, we've, we've advanced pretty far, and we'd like to share the idea with you all. Uh, regarding expanding Hopkinton's footprint for the upcoming marathon season. We have uh, uh, put together a program uh, sponsored by the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we'd like your support in this to display banners along the first mile of the course, uh, as well as some additional banners depending on the participation of the community uh, along Main Street, uh, of course, in conjunction with whatever requirements uh, or uh, you know, guidelines are in place relative to what happens down around the start line area. So our thought is, is that we wouldn't interact with that or impede what traditionally happens down uh, by the common and, and the center of town. Uh, our, our goal is to uh, have chamber members purchase a banner as well as put the extra money into purchase banners on behalf of the 26.2 Foundation, uh, the BAA, who has provided us artwork, as you can see in our slide, and um, I don't know if our slide up or not. Oh, I provided that yep. to Mike yesterday. Um, as well as um, uh, the town of Hopkinton theme being universal to all of these banners, uh, with the theme of it all starts here, and the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce also being on every single banner. So if you can imagine uh, 60 banners along the first mile, as well as another 10 to 15 or 20 on the main street, um, that, that have sponsors integrated with the 26.2 Foundation, the BAA, the Town of Hopkinton. Um, our goal is to get these up in April, uh, April 4th. Uh, we certainly do that in a safe way, get the right details. We've got uh, uh, the normal folks who do all the great volunteer work to help us with the bucket trucks and the printing at a low cost. Um, we will sell these only to the Hopkinton um, uh, Chamber of Commerce sponsors and, and members um, and get these up and also you know put the money in place to take them down in a timely manner in June so we'd like uh, your support and and uh, just want to let you know that's what we'd like to do we'd like to do this every year as well oh, that's that's great that's great it's um, well I know the chamber is good at doing this because you guys have been doing it uh, we did it for the library and we did it for the 300th putting these up and taking them down in a timely manner that's great Anybody have any questions for them? I had just a couple of questions. Um, I think this sounds great. Um, the production of banners, new hardware to hang banners. Um, so I'm trying to think of what's there right now. There is some kind of hardware for doing these flag standards. So yeah. this is not going to fit that. It's going to be something different. Where it exists, we will use those. Uh, yeah. But we'll be sure to have plenty of extra uh, similar sized hardware so that we can go much further than where the current footprint of banners have been in the okay. past. So that first mile, there's, I counted the poles the other day, there's uh, 48 poles between just uh, east of Ash Street down to 
uh, the intersection of uh, North Legacy and 135. Um, most of those poles don't have hardware on them. So this will include hardware to install those, and we'd leave the hardware up oh. when we take the banners down. Okay, so it's not a different kind of hardware. It's not. It's the same size. Compatible. It's That's just right, adding right. more. Yeah, it's uh, just adding more, making sure that if it isn't functional that we have yep. um, the right hardware to put it up so we have a consistent um, presentation of these throughout uh, each and all of the polls. And that will stay, so if we want to do more, That's they right. stay there. That's make right. Clear, we want to make it clear that the the center of town near the starting line, Main Street, yeah. the American flags. These, uh, th we're not going to put these banners on the poles where they're American flags. So that'll stay as it has been for years. Yeah, that was my next question because I remember like Memorial Day and all we do to some of the flags, but still the those same. always work together in harmony. They're not, they're not in the way. And we will not put a, put these banners on poles where they're American flags. <coughs> it'll okay, go. So it'll. it'll the starting line down the road a little bit, yeah. all the way to mile one. Then we'll, uh, there's still banners, actually library banners up outside this building. Mm -hmm. Now those will hopefully, if uh, the program is successful as we think it will be, will be replaced by these. Mm -hmm. well, answered my question. Uh, yeah, so does the hardware for these poles include uh, an adaption for uh, if there are double poles? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, no. That was a joke, obviously. <laughs> uh, obviously, they, every source will certainly have all those replaced by Marathon. Um, I think it's great. Anytime we can bring positive attention to the town or anything to do with the town, uh, I've always uh, historically been in favor of it from age probably five to present. So anytime we can um, positively promote the town and, and bring a little bit of the, um, of the uh, the, the charm and pride of Hopkins in, into the public eye, I think, is a great idea. So, anytime you do stuff like this, you got my thumbs up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, a, the banners. Are, actually, the banners that are on the poles outside are a little bit bigger than this, mm -hmm. but that'll give you an idea of what we're of what we're talking about. That's nice. Very nice. We've never been able to brand that first mile of the race course. You know, you know we're, we're concentrated around the start line, so this is pretty exciting uh, for all of us who think we ought to stretch this out a little bit. Yeah. This will yeah. help us accomplish that. Excellent. Thank you very much for coming up. Thanks for, for telling us about this and, and telling us the whole time. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 We are fear on the wings. Okay. I think it's a great idea. Um, Ms. Lazarus, are there any types of signed bylaws that we have that would prevent this from happening? I think the only thing we need to check out is the duration that they're up. And okay. They should come down. <coughs> so other than that, around Marathon, uh, we suspend the temporary sign regulations, so to speak, for this okay. purpose. Great. Okay. Yeah, um, no, I think it's a great idea. The same reasons uh, that have been mentioned. Uh, you know, it's <coughs> bringing more attention to, um, you know, the, hop the, the businesses in Hopkinton that help make this community what it is. Um, so, uh, you know, it shows, it, it shows their support for what's going on and it also gives them support, so. That's great. So we have some eager uh, Chamber of Commerce sales folks that want to get out and sell these sponsorships. Um, if I could maybe just, uh, Elaine, defer to you to, on the, the timing. Uh, we're looking at like a 12-week duration. If it needs to be another number, let us know. We can comply with that. We're, we're hopeful to get these up April 4th. Um, which is the middle of, the, of that week, uh, depending the, the security detail that we need for the uh, bucket trucks to go up and down. But we could be flexible on the back end as to when they come down. But our goal would be to get them down before the 4th of July. Okay. I'll check on yeah. that. Thank you. And you said they were going to go up around April 4th? April 4th. So we'd, uh, we'll get out and start selling these and uh, have a, a, a real nice uh, visual presence and expansion of our footprint during the marathon season. Great. And you said this is going from the starting line down to Clinton Street. A little the bit beyond the starting, starting line. Starting line, right? Not start line. Starting start, line. Start <laughs> line. No, you start line. You're correct. Great. Yeah. We'll go down to, uh, what well, we're going to go is, it, again, depends on how many uh, sponsors come on board with us. Um, we're going to try to at least get to uh, North Legacy and 135, uh, as well as do this uh, main part of town here in this, this part. But we can... If we have a, you know, even stronger turnout, we can continue down, you know, uh, further on 135, and hopefully in years to come, every poll will have a banner on it through 135 uh, uh, during the marathon season. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. <clears throat> I know there's one more person that has an announcement. Who has an announcement? Oh. Yeah. Yes. Kalalas is coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're here on behalf of Project Just Because, and we're going to be holding a Shamrock Shindig, our second annual, and it's on March 10th. So we're here to invite the public and the selectmen. We happen to have tickets if anybody would like to purchase mm -hmm. them. They're $50 each or $85 a couple or $60 at the door. You can get them online. You can give me a call. My phone number's in the book, but it's 435-5478. I'll be glad to deliver tickets to anybody's house. So um, it's a uh, big event for us. There's uh, only two big fundraisers that we have, and this is uh, the first of a, uh, the second one is the um, golf tournament. So we'd like to invite everybody, let them know it's at, at the um, Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Yep. So 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock, Saturday, March 10th. So it's a fun night with Irish dancers and food, food from a local chef, and it's a great time, but it also helps a wonderful cause that helps the people right in our community. So, And the selectmen have been very uh, <coughs> supportive of Project Just Because, so we just wanted to thank you for that as well. Thank you for making the announcement. Yeah. <coughs> That's great. Yep. Questions? Thank you. I'd also like to uh, remind people that um, this coming Saturday, March 3rd, is uh, Live for Evidence uh, Red Tie event um, that's uh, coming up. And that's also a very nice event that's, that's for a very worthy cause. Okay. Um, anybody else? Chief? Chief? Mary? Okay. Um, <clears throat> next is our consent agenda. We've got uh, ambulance fund gifts. What the board second will consider accepting the ambulance fund gifts in the memory of, of uh, Chief McMillan. Uh, a temporary alcohol license, board second will, will consider approving a temporary alcohol license for wines and malt only for a project just because for the Shamrock Shindig that we just heard about. The board of selectmen will consider approving a temporary alcohol license. Oh no, this one's been postponed. Um, and uh, that's it. That's all, I guess that's all we've got. Uh, so, um, is, would anybody like to break any of those out? I would like to break out uh, number two, please. Okay. I would like to break out the uh, project just because alcohol license, please. Okay. And I think the other alcohol license should also be broken. Well, the other one, the other one is that they they uh, they pulled it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, so that one, I just got a note uh, just before we started the meeting that number four has been pulled for, for temporarily and then the week of the next meeting. <clears throat> so uh, with that, the Board of Selectmen, I mean, the Chair will consider approving the uh, uh, Board of Selectmen for 2.8 and 2.13. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion passes. Ambulance fund, sir, please. <coughs> so it seems like every meeting, I get the privilege of kind of breaking this agenda item out and um, this consent agenda item out and just kind of talking <clears throat> a couple of minutes about how much we appreciate um, the generosity and it's, it, it has gone from a much more local to, uh, to almost a national thing where you know, the, the, the people that are, the, that are donating in memory of the the individuals that have passed, <coughs> it's, uh, it's, it's great to see. And, and it really does go to a, a great, that, that ambulance fund is a great fund. It, it, it allows the fire department <coughs> to enhance the services that they provide by training, by product, by anything. So it's, it really is, a, it's a very local charity that, that it just very, directly gives back to the town. And, you know, we had Tom McIntyre, um, you know, donations just came in and came in and came in. And now we're seeing the same thing with Chief McMillan, uh, another guy who was very influential in, in, uh, in a lot of the stuff with the town. So it's nice to see. Um, and the list this week are very distinguished. I won't read the donors, um, but there are uh, there were some very generous people that donated and uh, for
for a great cause and, and uh, in memory of a great person. So thank you to everybody. I always feel badly that, that we always have to have this on the, the, the memorials, but the, um, the really the, the caliber of people that passed, it's, uh, it's yep. wonderful that so many people remember them with, a, with gifts that uh, keep giving back. Mm -hmm. Ms. Wade, do you have anything on this? Uh, no, not on okay. this. So the uh, <coughs> chair will uh, consider a motion to accept the uh, ambulance fund gifts in memory of uh, Chief McMillan. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, um, Ms. Wright, the uh, temporary alcohol license for the Shamrock Shindig. Well, just a couple things I just wanted to get clarification on um, the application was a little inconsistent because the uh, estimated number of attentions on the alcohol license of attendees on the alcohol license uh, <coughs> request said 200 and then on the HCA reservation form said 100 so that's that's quite a disparity. I, I'm just wondering if someone can clarify and have that be consistent on both the applications. Is it a 200 person event or 100? Um, well, it's, uh, we hope it's 200, but we just have no way of knowing how many people are gonna get the tickets. The, uh, so it was just an estimate when we got the, uh, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, we just uh, can only estimate the number because mm -hmm. we don't know how many people yeah. sell tickets. So I think the um, contract with the HCA was done first and we just were estimating 100. And then as we thought about it, you know, we're thinking maybe it's gonna, it could possibly be closer to 200, but um, uh -huh. again. We've only we, sold 50 <laughs> tickets yeah. as of today. <laughs> okay, well that's good. And yeah. it's coming, coming up. up. <laughs> it's less than two weeks away. Yeah. I, I was just trying to recall when we gave HCA the all alcohol, although this is just wine and malt, I thought there were only a certain number of events they could have that were in the large like 200 category. How, do we know how this fits in with that? Would that be taking one of those or? I know that it was, was reviewed. It is early in the year, so it, I'm sure they haven't met any quotas at this point. Yeah, well, I guess that's not our problem, and if mm -hmm. HCA is willing to, you know, perhaps use one of their big event slots for this, that, that that's up to them. Um, well, I think from reading this, it sounds like, um, you know, they're, they're paying for the hall, so I don't think it would matter what the cause is. Yeah, no, but HCA. wasn't there a limit on how many 200 well, Yeah, I think there was, the, uh, there was a limit, and... Yeah, I forgot if it was 200 or 180, but I'm sure they're complying yeah. with the 200. Um, but I guess all I'm saying is I'm sure this would count against that that if number of large events. Yeah. And but they're also getting paid for it. Right. So. So has the police detail been secured? Because I know the police asked for a detail. <coughs> if it's that. over 100. That's what that's what HCA told us. If they had if we had over 100 people, we'd have to get a police detail. 50 tickets right now we didn't feel it was warranted but we definitely will ask yeah okay. we talked about getting one on standby in case yeah yeah you know. I mean last year we had 115 <clears throat> and that was our first annual so we're oh, hoping so you've, to you've match had, that you, so you've already had them so yep. this isn't this, this isn't is the, the first second. one oh, no. that, that makes me more comfortable that and that the, yeah. the kinks have been worked out at yeah. least yeah. and the but last year though I believe that we had more tickets sold at this point mm -hmm. exactly so yeah and twice as sure that work. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll just check in with HPD on your numbers because that was the one comment yes. on the permitting team was the police requested that you yeah. know arrangements be made for a detail. So yeah, we are aware. For crowd control. Um, so <coughs> I, I have no other problems with this. I just have kind of a general <coughs> comment maybe to us and to the board is that in looking at both of these applications, right at the top it says all applications must be filed at a minimum of 60 days in advance, and it was underlined. And so I wonder, do we care? Why is that? Um, you know, this is coming up March 10th, it's coming up real soon. Um, you seem to have your arrangements made and all, but um, do we need to have that? Why is that? If, if it's on the application and it's underlined, it kind of seems 
to imply that if you don't do this, either you're not going to get your, your approval or I, I don't like things that have must be and then we don't enforce it. So like, why do you even, why do we even bother? Do you know anything? Is there a lot well, of... Well, I'm, I'm assuming that you have a time limit on there or extended period of time to allow for <coughs> sufficient review by town departments and right. others and to work through any situations. But if somebody does come in later, I don't think it's the policy to reject an application only because it was submitted a month in advance. Mm -hmm. if the, because if there's a problem and, and we don't get input from other departments or, or such, right. then, then they just... I think, part of it, I think part of it was... Whether it was for something like this or parade permits, there was a point where we were beginning to have things put on an agenda uh, in emergency mode mm -hmm. because it was in five days or maybe yeah, it was in yeah. 10 days, but it was the last Board of Selectmen meeting yeah. we were going to have. And so part of it was to start, you know, squashing that. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as Ms. Lazarus said, um, I, I don't see that time frame. Uh, being something that we would say no over. Not that, no. Uh, no. But it, so having it there leaves us the option that in a case where things really are not lined up, we have recourse to say no because you didn't allow enough time. Yeah, and I think having that time is to everybody's benefit because you yeah. know even you know we have a few comments here. You know, you mentioned you mentioned the request for there being a detail officer and. You know, the police also requested that there be a policy in place for over service or intoxicated uh, patrons. You know, and there are various, all the comments here are minor um, and I'm sure it can be worked out with conversations with you know, police, fire, and Board of Health, but you know, just making sure that they have that opportunity right. to work that out right. uh, and, then, and then not have everything fail because there wasn't enough time for something that could have been prevented. May I make a comment? Um, just as far I was tried to uh, get in the partial application because I knew this event was coming, but <clears throat> the application is sort of detailed, a lot of parts to it, mm -hmm. and I was told, you know, you have to have all of it together. So, like, we knew where we might have it or the date, but we had to get where the alcohol was coming from, the insurance permits, the like, all everything had to be together, which is why we're a little later than we would have liked mm -hmm. to have been. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm kind of more asking the question of us, because when I see something that says must, I'm thinking, okay, right at the top, why is that there, you know, what is that to allow? So I appreciate just just understanding that uh, that more, and I think that probably still puts applicants on notice that they really should be, you know, ahead of the curve rather than behind, so. Well, especially if it's a if it's a first-time event. Now, right. that's why I asked that question. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have worked out the, um, the kinks in, in the last one, and that's how you know whether and how your sales are going to. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that's it's great. Okay, so with that, um, the chair requests a motion to approve the request for a temp special temporary alcohol license for Project Just Because for the event on March 10th, 2018 at the HCA. So moved. Second. Um, Mr. Chair, I would just like to amend that, and I, I'd like to make sure that. Um, the comments of the various public safety officials and Board of Health are addressed. Uh, so I fully intend to vote yes for this, but I want to have it be contingent on um, you know these these comments being addressed. Okay, and uh, did you accept the uh, yes. fill in the Yes. You. And then also um, the, on here is to uh, approve or a uh, a fee waiver. Do we normally do that? A fee waiver for Sometimes. Well, we take that as a separate. No, that's what I was going to do. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So uh, with that, uh, um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So um, now. So you guys will make sure that you talk to uh, Lieutenant Porter and uh, Chief Slayman and um, the Board of Health. We've already uh, talked to the Board of Health as well, okay. so that's all possible. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I just got a text from Mr. Herr. Would like me to tell you that he is a standing yes to motions unless he interjects. Okay, great. Um, the uh, fee waiver discussion. <clears throat> Do we? How, how many have we done in the past? What's it, what's our criteria? I think typically they're requested by nonprofits and for fundraising events. And the fee is seventy-five dollars. 
whatever it says on the application. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm fine with it. It's okay, Chair's looking for a motion to um, waive the $75 fee for um, the project just because. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Oh, Mr. Herr, I believe, is going along with this also. I did not hear him interject. Excellent. So, <laughs> he is not afraid to interject. Good luck selling Thank more you. tickets. Thank you, you very know. much. We appreciate it. Thanks. Shamrock Shindig on March 10th. And may I make a suggestion? Kalala's two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead of schedule. Uh, class 1 and Class 2, 2018 license renewal. The Board of Selectmen will consider the renewal of a Class 1 and Class 2 license requested by Michael Buckley of Vermeer Northeast of 224 <coughs> South Street, Hopkinton. Come on up. Ms. Wright, uh, 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 what's, uh, can you give us the background on this? Sure. Um, so this is a business that has typically been licensed annually by the board. This year there was some discussion with town council and with state officials as to whether they needed a class one or class two license, and it was felt that they did not. However, when I believe that when you went to the registry, they told you you needed a license. So it's bounced back, and turns out the registry requires the license, and so that's where we are. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, my name is um, Ed Upchurch. Uh, Michael Buckley is on the way and should have popped through the door here in a moment. Sorry, uh, we're running a little early today. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I'm the general manager uh, for Vermeer Northeast, um, and uh, she captured it uh, uh, well. We are, uh, we've been uh, operating um, at, since at least 2001 under our current ownership uh, at uh, 224 um, South Street, and um, we are a, a heavy equipment business. Um, we uh, sell and service um, uh, small, everything from small equipment um, to, to much larger equipment, and of course that equipment doesn't fall under this licensing. We're looking for the um, license for the vehicles uh, or the uh, equipment that's towed behind um, uh, smaller um, like pickup trucks and that type of uh, utility type vehicle. So um, as I said, uh, Michael should be walking in at any moment here and he has the background information. Okay, any questions? So, no, I mean, the only thing I will add to this is Vermeer has been here for 17 years. We've never had a problem with Vermeer, Vermeer that I'm aware of. Uh, they have good equipment, they have good, uh, you know, they've always been friendly to the consumers in town. Uh, I don't have a problem with, uh, as long as we're able to do things legally and rationally and quickly, I have no problem kind of getting this done. I, I, I just, I'm completely confused here. When I looked through the materials that were sent in my packet and I saw Vermeer's application, which is sales and service of heavy equipment, and then I saw an entertainment license, no dancing, no nudity, uh, are we talking dancing back holes? I mean, <coughs> why are we looking at an entertainment license relative to heavy equipment sales? Well, if you've ever seen my kid watch videos of splitters, <laughs> it is entertaining. <laughs> yeah. uh, what am I missing here? Well, if, if you've also ever seen one uh, kick a piece of wood out backwards, uh, out the back, uh, you do a little That's dancing okay. there, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's called, they call it chuck and duck. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so uh, I, I do not know the answer to that. It's, uh, it's so do I. It's a one-size-fits-all application. No so oh, okay. It's a general license application, so they just checked off the boxes that applied to them. No nudity. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. No, 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 to be clear, that's for employees, oh. not for the consumers. No music, no shows. <laughs> it only is described by Mass General Law, so. <laughs> Section 140.183A. Oh, man. Well, well, we, okay. can, we can assure that you funny. that that type of behavior will not be. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, they're not selling motorcycles. Okay, no. all right. Okay, I, I, you know, I, I, Mr. Starr, do you have anything? I think this is this is pretty straightforward. Actually, you can have this done before Mr. Buckley shows up. Okay. Yeah. Um, with that, the chair requests a motion to renew the Class One and Class Two license for Vermeer Northeast at 224 South Street for one year from 1128 2018. So moved. Second. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Motion passes. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you so much. Just make sure they have a permit. Make sure they don't have any of those things we talked about in the heavy equipment sales. <laughs> <laughs> that works fine. Without a proper okay. invite to us at least. So now we have one of those now we have one of those fun things. So why there was so much blue back there. Oh, it'll be fun. Okay, the Board of Selectmen will consider appointing Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Stickney for a full-time police officer. Benjamin has been a 10-year veteran of the Sherborne PD. Sherborne. Sh Sherborne. 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 Well, Sherborne. Sorry. Foreigner. I'm reading quickly. <laughs> I know, that's funny. Welcome. Good evening. Dave. Well, it's a pleasure to uh, introduce you to... Uh, Officer Stickney, or soon to be Officer Stickney, if I can get that consideration in the vote. Um, as mentioned in the uh, agenda, he is a 10 year veteran of the Sherborne Police Department. Uh, he came out number one on our process by far, and he is going to be an excellent asset to our police department. His focus is on community policing. Over the past 10 years, he has a great background in technology and introducing uh, technology to the Sherborne Police Department. I know for a fact that the chief is pissed because he's losing a great officer, but <laughs> it's our game. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to welcome aboard and, and uh, have him say a few words. Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, having me tonight. Um, I have worked in the town of Sherburn for uh, the last 10 years. Um, I started as a dispatcher there and uh, worked my way up to a police officer. And uh, I've done quite a few things there. It's been a great experience. I've worked with some great people over there. but. Uh, you know, Hopkinton's always kind of been a second home to me. My family, uh, aunts and uncles, my father and my mother uh, grew up in town and, you know, always spent a lot of time in town. And uh, this was always a place that I wanted to be, and uh, I'm really happy to hopefully have the opportunity to be here. Excellent. Thanks for coming. Did we did you poach him or anything? You know, you know select when we're going to get in trouble driving through there, you know, cutting from Dover, cutting oh, yeah. through. Okay, just yeah. want to make sure that we're not uh, poaching. And, and just to let you know a little more background, He's going to be uh, put into our uh, field training program, even though we have 10 years. He does things in, the, in Sherborne, but you got to learn the Hopkinton way here. And his field training officer is uh, Arthur Schofield, and uh, he's going to be, you know, he's got a few years on him. He, he'll be the teacher. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent, Mr. Cesari. I've heard a little bit about you. I hope all good things. <coughs> yeah, I was, I was talking with, uh, with someone on, on the force who works with you, and uh, he was telling me that he was prepared to sabotage you, other than the fact that he's going to benefit because he lives in Hopkinton. <laughs> you might know him, right? <coughs> well, you're old neighbors. But uh, no, I've heard a lot of great things about you. And uh, welcome to Hopkinton, and we wish you the most success. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Well, Officer Stickney, we're delighted to have you come on board. And, uh, you know, as you know, uh, Hopkinton's been ranked right up there as one of the safest communities in Massachusetts. So you're coming to a great place, and we look forward to your helping us keep that ranking. Absolutely. And we're delighted to have you. Uh, hope you'll be happy here. <coughs> Hopkinton's way better than Sherburn. <laughs> so I know you'll Don't be tell happy. them that. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thank you. Well, oh. <laughs> Mr. Stickney. Sir. I could, uh, I, this, so, <laughs> so, it's getting hot here. I'm looking at, so I'm looking over your left shoulder, I'm looking at your father. So your father and I have been friends for a long, long time. He was my first youth football coach in Hopkinton with uh, Chief Emeritus Flannery. <laughs> um, so I know that there's a ton of pride in Hopkinton that goes through your family line. I could come up here and I could make you squirm. <laughs> and I've had requests from many people from I'm the department sure. that you're leaving to <laughs> make sure. you squirm. <laughs> if the, the sergeant that you work for <laughs> gives you two thumbs up and says clearly that it's our loss, and Hopkinton's gain. I know that sergeant very well. Compliments don't fall out of his mouth very often. Mm -hmm. They don't. He thought very highly of you. He still thinks very highly of you. I know between that recommendation, my interaction with you over the years, and the family lineage that we have, you're going to be a complete and total asset to our department. 
our department is the pride of our town, and I think that by chiefly hiring people like you, we don't have to be the second loser. We're, we're ranked number three in the state. We might be able to jump up to the silver or the gold. Absolutely. So, thank you for coming over. Thank you for vacating that town that you used to work for. <laughs> um, and this is just one more step of making Hopkinton great again. So congratulations. Do thank a good you very job. much. I know that you will. Thank you. That's as nice as you're ever going to get me to be. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Unless I would you pull me night. over. If you pull me over, I'll say sir to you. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome aboard. I'm, from my heart, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Wow, I can't follow that one up. <laughs> I'm just going to say welcome. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Really, you know, after putting <clears throat> 10 years, you know, at, at, at your previous position, uh, it really must have taken a lot to come here, and we're really grateful that you did. Uh, Chief, good job. Good job the last two weeks and bringing him in. Thanks very Thank much. You very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for your son. <laughs> so wait, hold, 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 wait, 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 hold, wait, 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 wait. Not at this yeah. point. Yeah, we haven't the voted yet. Right. We're politicians. We speak out both sides of our mouth. It doesn't mean that you're in. The chair now <laughs> is requesting a motion to appoint Benjamin Stigney as a full-time police officer in the Hopkinton Police Department. I will so move that motion. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Hurd, you want to even verbalize this one? He's in. Sounds great. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Any, any, any nays, any abstentions? No. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, now we can do that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to start going. Thank goodness you had to do the form. Thank you. Good job, Ben. All right, you get all your handsome guys together. You can come out. You don't have to stay in the horseshoe. Oh, they don't want you well, we'll take a group shot if uh, you can get them up. All right, let's get them. All right, can we have all the uh, men in blue and one red? Cool. Yeah. And uh, mom and dad? Get the family up. Get the family up. Come on, Sam. Jump in. Can we all fit this? All right, we'll get you up in there. Budget conversations. Uh, <laughs> okay, careful. <laughs> okay, seven sixteen. We're doing wonderfully. Okay. Um, All right. Please just please disperse. We have a meeting going on. All downhill from here. So. Um, Can't say that to the cops are out. Miss Lazarus, are we are we um, bypassing the uh, capital plan for right now until Mr. Uh, it's, it's up to you. Yeah, so let's 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 wait till um, Mr. Kamalo is back. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because not at all. All right. Right, because yeah. it, it, yeah. it's not. Uh, he's, he's, yeah. He knows all the numbers. Uh, the annual town meeting articles. I think there was a draft warrant in the packet. It's still evolving. If I may, Mr. Yes. Chair, Elaine, this is really just a typo. I picked out that on page 20 of that warrant, under nuisance bylaw, it talks about revolving funds. <laughs> Something's wrong there. Cut and paste. Cut and paste. So just, just, I think that just got wrong text put in for that, but that was that.
I saw that same thing. <laughs> we did the. Uh, so what are we covering? I know. So uh, were we going to pull the um, the nuisance article? I thought we were going to have. Um, That's what I want. I thought we were going to have the building and other uh, Chuck here might come in and kind of have some questions with us, have a discussion with us. Well, we had the last one. I know I had said I'd really like to get yeah, some input I we were from get them in front of us. Uh, as to some clarity how they feel about yep. enforcement or. I don't see them here. Yeah, because we have to know whether or not we're going to support that one <clears throat> and how we want it to come out. Got yeah, some feedback, that, but I yeah. um, Everything's in here. Anybody have any uh, other changes? Are, are we supposed to be reviewing any of these? Yeah, we're just reviewing right it. There's now? no, uh, there's there's no motion on it. There's no uh, action. So we're just reading through. Right, them. we're just reading through it, and if there's oh. uh, anybody has uh, any. Um, I did have one question. Um, the uh, article on page three, the setting the salary of the town clerk, the personnel committee no longer wants to sponsor those articles. Started last year uh, with the board of selectmen. I think the question is, would the board be willing to sponsor that that article as it did last year? The question has come up. So, so that would so that would have us set the salary of the our, town clerk. That's our salary. Just be the sponsor. Elected it's officials. Well, we're setting the salary of elected officials. That's right. It's zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's the town clerk salary. It's the town clerk. Well, I can understand why he would want to sponsor that. Well, that was the personnel committee that de declined it. They did last year as well. Okay. They feel it's not part of their, their purview. All right, anything else? So our placeholder things that we have in here for a placeholder, with nothing we have to act on right now, right? Right. Okay. <coughs> so this was just a, like Ms. Wright meant you found something and... Okay. That was the only thing that I found, thing that Claire found. Uh, it's the one I was going to say. <laughs> yep, <I> stole <laughs> my word. <laughs> Aren't you not glad we all read it? <laughs> okay. Um, all right, well, with that... Um, well, this is we're, 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 moving, we're motoring right along. So we are. Th there are meetings we haven't even started at this point. I'm aware. Okay, so um, since there, there's no action on annual town meeting articles, uh, board, board liaison reports. I have none. I'm good. So am I right now. That's why nothing for this board, but I spent uh, last night with the uh, planning board putting through uh, some of the uh, articles that are at the end there from, uh, for the zoning changes. And uh, that, was, that was interesting. Um, all right, and so uh, and any board invites, Ms. Lazarus? There are some. Uh, first is an event on March 8th at the Hopkins Center for the Arts, the EHOP Spotlight Forum on Town Growth and Development. Um, I will be there, and Norman will be there, and John Ferrari will be there. Talking about the town's growth and development, <coughs> and that's at seven o'clock. Um, there's an event, um, the uh, Eagle Scout Court of Honor for Nathaniel Shingleton, who you already uh, honored here, mm -hmm. will be on March 18th. And the upcoming MBTA advisory board uh, meetings are listed as well. That's it. If I could just add, there's that uh, on March 10th, there's that Hoffington 101 event at the library from 10 to 2, which seems to be kind of a info session for people about the various town boards. And I know they're looking for people from the different town boards to um, be there in some form. Um, I did notice at the same time, though, it's 10 to 2. And for some of us who may be interested there is a memorial service for Rick McMillan at 11 
which is smack in the middle of that. So, um, you know, I, I will certainly go to that as much as I can, but, you know, I, I intend to go to the, the chief service as well, so it's kind of too bad it's been scheduled right when it is, so. I will, I will be at the chief's yeah, service. so will I. So will I. Okay, we just can't speak when we're there. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, uh, town manager's report. <clears throat> there isn't a report. No, okay. And Norman had some items on here. The one in uh, the first and the third were predicated on him having meetings, but he was not able to have those meetings. And then, so then I'll speak to this. I'll speak to this to the second one. Mm -hmm. That um, this was great news that we got uh, last week. The um, uh, Board of Selectmen got they got a letter from the Eversource uh, about the Gasgate station. It says, uh, "Dear Norman, I wish to inform you that after thorough review, including a due diligence process, seeking alternative sites, and input from the town, Eversource has decided not to propose a Gasgate station on Elm Street." That was really great news that we got. We were waiting for today to, uh, to announce it. Um, they, uh, they go on to say during the process, they were made aware of the community's concerns by the residents and local officials, uh, officials including the Office of Representative Dykema. The alternative that, uh, uh, that addressed these concerns while still meeting our infrastructure needs could not be found. Um, this, was, this was just really great. I really want to emphasize this was um, the community sticking together and um, uh, speaking with one voice and on several instances. We, we all worked together, we, and um, Norman and I went into town several times to uh, meet with uh, uh, Senator Spilka, whose office was just wonderful for us, and, and, Senator, and, and uh, uh, Carolyn Dykeman's office. And I mean, it was, it was, it was great, it, uh, <coughs> the help we got, and uh, all the people that wrote in and, and uh, came in to speak to us and uh, came to all of those meetings, it worked. And this is where, uh, where the community activism really, really worked. And, and we just hope that uh, in the future that uh, Eversource um, knows that uh, when we speak, we mean business. And I hope that uh, in the future that uh, they will come forward ahead of time and, uh, and try and work out uh, host community agreements with us so that uh, we don't have to run to uh, loggerheads again. Well, I also think that a, a lot of it had to do with the organization of the pushback to Eversource. Mm -hmm. I think that not having everybody scream and yell and where they had a, a very, you know, a, a spearhead and they had the, the, the people that were kind of the spokesman and, and everything was done rationally. I think that gets a lot more done than, you know, having a form letter sent by 300 people about a certain issue that may or may not be coming up in front of the board. And, you know, that, that means a lot when you have a group that are all, you know, like thinking, that are, that are speaking together and, and come in a rational manner, it goes a lot further towards the appellant than it does, you know, this form letters that are coming from both sides of other issues that may come before us someday. And, you know, we get 75, 80 of those a week. You know, we have it in the last couple of weeks, but um, it's just much more manageable and I think it means much more. So, well done. Any comments? Well, I think it's a really nice example of how, you know, the most effective government is the local government that's closest to the people. Um, and, and I do agree with Mr. Ted Stone in some respect, but at the same time, um, I think, you know, I remember going to a, a, a legislative forum almost a year ago, last spring, over in Ashland uh, at the Warren Center, and there were a lot of residents that just came independently to speak to the, the state senators about this gas gate station. And they have been hearing from, you know, letter writing, from people at public forums, from town officials, from these spearhead groups, as you say. I, I think, you know, sometimes when you just send a letter, the recipient doesn't know whether that letter has 10 people behind it or 100 people behind it. And yeah, I just think it's a great example of a community as a whole coming forward and speaking very, very clearly um, from the smallest to the greatest 
uh, and, and that clearly makes a difference. And so I would never discourage citizens from speaking out. Um, too often you'll say, well, why didn't you say something? Oh, you did such a good job. Well, you know, um, if you're concerned about something, everyone, it, that's a wonderful thing about our country. You have a right to speak up, and you should. And this is proof positive of the effectiveness of the voice of the people. Excellent. Thank you. I think it's a, you know, I'm glad that this decision came down this way. I think it's a, a great accomplishment uh, for every level uh, of voice, I guess. So, you know, I mean, I remember, I guess it was about a year ago when summer and the whole neighborhood started coming before us. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and obviously, something like this didn't, didn't take much effort to get us behind them as right. well. And the efforts of Mr. Kamalo and Ms. Lazarus and then right up on through our state representatives and, and state senator Spilka, uh, you know it is a it's a great thing knowing that the voices can be heard, and um, and this turned out the way it should. So it's great. So congratulations the, to everyone. Involved. Towards the end of the letter, and the letter is in the is in the uh, public forum. So if anybody wants to see it, the resource will continue to balance the needs of our customers with the interests of the town and its neighborhoods. We look forward to working collaboratively with the town on such challenges going forward. And I just really hope that they hold to that because uh, we really can have a great uh, relationship, a continued relationship. Okay, with that, uh, any future board agenda items? Nope. nope. Ms. Ms. Lazarus, anything? No. Nope. Excellent. Well, with that, the chair will request a motion to uh, adjourn. Does uh, Mr. Hurd, do you have anything before we, uh, yeah. before we adjourn? Perfect. No, I'm all set. Thanks. All right. Good. Excellent. Mr. Hurd, would you like to make the motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Mo that, that's, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and, and uh, have a great evening. And remember, March 3rd and March 10th, we have uh, two great events coming up. 